Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd. I'm back from the Bay Area Maker Fair. And what you see in front of me is a pair of shoes, and they're not just any shoes. These are feats. They say feats on the inside. I don't know if you can see that. But the reason that they are special is because these shoes are 3D printed shoes. They use a, a flexible material, and, and you get shoes. And it's not just this part that's printed. The soles of the shoes are also printed. Of course, mine are blue. Of course. I got these at Bay Area Maker Fair from Feats. I talked to Lucy uh, from Feats, and she got these for me. In fact, these were emergency printed, I think it was Friday or Saturday, and then Rush shipped to the Bay Area for me to pick up Sunday morning. So here's where it goes. I'm gonna review these shoes for you because they're 3D printed. First, I've got the interview with Lucy at Bay Area Maker Fair, and then after the interview, uh, I wore it all Sunday, Bay Area Maker Fair. And then I also uh, wore it to the airport, and I wore it on the plane, and then the Monday afterwards I, I, I wore it to work and back. Uh, and there's some interesting things about the shoes, some good, some bad. First what we're going to do is we're going to go to the interview with Lucy that I did at Bay Area Maker Fair. Once that interview is over, we're going to talk about the good, we're going to talk about the bad, and we're going to give some final thoughts, at least for now, <laughs> I guess not so final, of these. 3D printed feats shoes. Here we go. Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd here at Bay Area Maker Fair 2017, thanks to Matter Hackers, and I'm here with Lucy Beard, the chief cobbler of feats. Now, tell me more about feats. I've seen and heard of 3D printed apparel, 3D printed shoes. What makes these so cool? You know what? 3D printers can actually make a full shoe, and we actually make it with just a smartphone, and one 3D printer can make your whole shoe. I started at Maker Faire here three years ago. I know, I came with an idea, I met thousands of people and they were like, half of them were like, you're crazy. And the other half were like, when can I have my shoes? <laughs> and it's taken us three years to kind of really get now, we're live and making thousands of shoes, but like we've done it. So I'm really proud to be here at Maker Faire to be like, 3D printing is the bomb. I agree, 3D printing is great and printing shoes is awesome. What's the process? How, if someone such as myself said, hey, I would like to get a pair of 3D printed shoes, what would I do? So you're gonna download the app. It's a free app on Android and iOS. You take three photos with a white sheet of paper. Cause nerds, we know the size of the white sheet of paper. So we do photogrammetry, right? Cause then we know the size of your feet, right? It's all simple math and science. It's total simple, simple math and science. I totally get it. And then we get that 3D model, right? So you can see how detailed that is with your arch. Wow, that's, that's really detailed. That's kind of cool. You can zoom in, zoom out. We get 5,000 data points from that one picture of each foot. Isn't that amazing? So we can measure everything. So then when we make your shoe, it's not about length or about width, but it's your arch, it's your navicular height, your heel to ball ratio, it's even your toe length so that women don't have to have toe cleavage. I didn't know that was a thing. Is that a thing? It is absolutely a thing. Like you talk to women, it's like, what do I peek on here? It's the same with the shoes. That sounds terrible. I'm sorry. Well, some people love it. You know, they want to show it off and other people are like, no to toe cleavage. Hashtag toe cleavage. Hashtag toe cleavage. <laughs> Once someone downloads the app, takes the three pictures against the sheet of paper, and you do, you guys do your magic on it, how long is it from order time to the time they get their shoes? We're only going to get faster. Right now, it only takes like six to eight hours to actually 3D print the shoe because we print it in parts and on different printers. But then, you know, we've got all these orders in there, so we deliver it to you by snail mail within two weeks. Okay, let's talk about the printing process then because these are shoes, so they're under uh, a lot of stress, some even crazy amounts of stress depending on who's using them. What, what material is this and what printers are printing these? So what we did is I just like took apart a bunch of shoes and melted them, you know, like with a blowtorch. Are you I, serious? I'm a maker. Yeah, that's what I did. I like blowtorch these things. Now, I, of course, like burnt my eyes a lot with a lot of things. Don't do this to shoes. There's a lot of bad materials. Um, but it did eventually find that a lot of this is kind of TPE or uh, polyurethane. And so then I turned it into something that I could make into a filament. And so this is our filament, right? Look how stretchy it is. Oh wow, that's and it's still it's still tough. Even at even when it's stretched out, it's still incredibly strong. And you have to have something that is amazingly flexible but also durable because it's on your feet. And like you said, there's a ton of stress going on. So we wanted to make something that lasts for industry standard, which is five hundred miles or about six months of wear. So we made this, you know, our, our scientist was based in Chattanooga, Tennessee, so we called it Nougaflex. Of course you did. 
course we did, because you know, like our local taco store was called Taco Nuga. Of course it is. So why would we not call this Nuga Flex? So that is our proprietary little material, and we make it in-house so that we can kind of keep it to the diameter that we need. But as you imagine, it is a bleep, a uh, wave of pre to print. Did you just censor yourself? I, did. I censored myself. Is that like hashtag pre sensor you know? <laughs> um, so then we've had to like make our own nozzles, our own make drive systems, our own code to actually run it. And we're always learning. You know, we're making it softer and softer and softer. So eventually it can almost be like fabric. But believe me, if you're a material scientist, I would love to talk to you because this is the hardest thing to find. It really is. Like tons of people are doing stuff in metals, but nobody's really working on stuff that can be wearable and comfortable. No, this is this is a, a classification on its own. It's in, it's incredibly robust, but even stretchy, even flexible. What what does a finished shoe look like? Can you show me one of those? I've got a pair just for you. We prepared it beforehand. That's so nice of you. All right. Well, Thank you. Where are you? There you are. Here we go. So Ooh. The axis. And the reason it's called the axis, our shoes have X, Y, or Z in them because like we're 3D printing. So just like Z is for the third dimension, X is for the first dimension, and we're putting a new spin of axis on the earth. Huh, you know? Yeah, I know, see, there's all these plays in what we do with our words. Our engineers name things like Nuga, but the marketing team go things like, yeah, let's put a little new spin on the uh, old sneaker, 3D printing, let's call it the axis. <laughs> but what we do is we do that fit that's all based off of the smartphone, so we're really the most advanced fit in the world. And of course, we say we're seven billion sizes, and this one is yours. Oh, this is okay. I let's let's take this out of the package. Could you please? Yeah, here we go. He's gonna rip okay. it. Is it like Christmas? It's kind of like Christmas and birthdays and a little bit of New Year thrown into one. Love it. Now, all of our printers actually have names, and this was printed on Astro the dog, and Superman, of wow. course, the superhero. Look at this! Look at Holy cow! So tell me a little bit about this shoe. What, what? Are, I see a bunch of different colors. I see different components. Can you identify these for me? So all of this is actually made from that same material that we just talked about, our Nougaplex. And you know, the magic of 3D printing is, yeah, the magic of 3D printing is that you change the infill structure. So you can make one material as hard as a rock, you know, as dense as a rock, or as light as a feather, just by changing that infill structure. And that's what you've done. So like you can see here, this is going to be bendable. You got to bend that shoe. You want it to actually move with your foot so that the biomechanics is right. But at the same time, the wear pattern on here has been tested for 500 miles so that this thing is not going to like fall apart after a week of wear. I'm really, can I try these on right now? Yeah, yeah, go for it. I got to hold it, right? Okay. He's going. We're going to follow him in. We're watching. You want me to hold your phone for you as well? There we go. So this, yeah, you can wear them with socks or without socks. So, you know, 3D printing is awesome. We would love to have everything 3D printed, but today's technology means we put a fabric liner on the inside and that fabric liner is recycled, right? For us, recyclability is a major deal and the material is antimicrobial and antibacterial. So you can wear it with socks or without and it won't be stinky. Is that good? Yeah. Look at that smile. So like that's the coolest thing that we love to do because people usually go, no, 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 3D printed shoes, they must be hard, they must be plastic, they must be uncomfortable. And like, go wear these shoes, man. You're gonna see, yeah, I know. So like, we always 3D print things. Can we 3D print interesting things? So we did a business card holder for our little giveaway today. And you're wearing your shoes, man. He's off. These are comfortable. I didn't, I didn't know what to expect at all, but there's pressure around my foot, like a shoe would put, but it's even and consistent around the entirety of my foot, and it's not uncomfortable. It feels like a glove, like a foot glove. I would imagine like a Vibram Five Fingers probably feels similar, but this is cooler because it's 3D printing. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. 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 Okay, I'm going to jump. You said <laughs> These feel good. I like this. This is comfortable. <laughs> there we go. So you saw my interview with Lucy. You saw me wearing these shoes. Again, I wore these shoes for the Sunday of Maker Faire. Uh, and I wore them from Maker Faire to the hotel to get bags. I wore them to the airport. Uh, I wore them on the airplane. I wore them home. 
And then I wore them all of Monday to and from work. Oh, and then after work, of course, uh, my kids were in the Little League, so I wore it to the park. I wore the shoes to the park, wore them home. The way Feats makes these shoes, eventually, as I think, is they're all going to be printed at once, but right now each part is printed on a different 3D printer. The insides of the shoe are fabric, and they're attached later, and it looks like they are stitched into place. The different parts of the shoe, the top, this middle white layer, and then the blue bottom on mine, are all then, I, I believe, glued together or either 3D printed together, depending on how many layers are printed all at once. The shoes themselves are quite comfortable. When you put them on, and they slip on really easily, it feels like a glove around your foot. If you've ever worn Vibram Five Fingers, or if, um, or if you have a, an almost a loose pair of socks, it's the same feel. It's an even amount of comfortable pressure around the foot entirely. Uh, like I said, I wore them for two days in total. The reason I stopped wearing them though, well, we'll get into that in just a minute. Feats offers two different types of models. One is the standard shoe. And this shoe is just a standard, well, in my case, a standard 13. They also offer customized shoes like we talked about in my interview with Lucy. And those are going to be very interesting. And I say that because I have extremely flat feet. I push my foot down onto the ground. I have barely any arch and my, uh, my, my foot is wide. So when put into these shoes, I believe my, any discomfort I felt is most likely from them not fitting correctly to my feet. When I would put my foot into the shoe and I would bend the shoe like this, fabric usually bends in a certain way and, can, and, uh, to the, and it's comfortable around this, this area of the foot when you bend, but because this is a type of plastic and you bend it, it the, the, the bend or the crease or whatever you want to call it, it, it pushes into your foot or at least it pushed into my foot, and it made the top of my foot hurt. It wasn't a lot of pain. It was, it was uncomfortable, enough to where I wanted to stop wearing the shoes. The other reason I stopped wearing the shoes is because they started to, let's see if I can show you this, they started to come apart right there. Uh, they're also on the other side, they're coming apart. And let's see, and this one is starting to lift on this side and it's, it's coming, it's starting to come off on that side as well. And the reason I suspect that is happening is because this is directly on a point where the shoe bends. So here's that part that's separated and when you bend the shoe, it's putting a lot of force on that part of the shoe. One of the things I considered was that because my feet are so flat and these are not built specifically for my feet, it could be that the width of the shoe is, is shorter than the width of my foot. And so my foot is putting this pressure this way on the shoe more so than what it's built for. And that's causing a failure at the points of, uh, of stress. That said, it should probably handle it better. One of the other things I want to point out is because the shoe is entirely 3D printed, the bottom part of the shoe is essentially a type of plastic. It's not Lego plastic. It's not a hard ABS. It's still a flexible-ish plastic material, but it also means that on a concrete surface, you're going to get less traction than wearing uh, a typical shoe with a standard sole. So here's what we're left with as far as this Feet's non-custom shoe. It's extremely comfortable for the most part. It's not something you would want to go hiking in or spend a considerable amount of time in over and over and over because I don't think it's able to fit the foot as well as the custom shoe and it could then provide some discomfort in the ways or in the areas in where the plastic bends like plastic. I did put this through an enormous first test. Of course, I just put a shoe on and I wore it through Maker Faire and then uh, the Monday afterwards. So I did in two days put it through roughly 10 miles. I also did lose traction in a couple places just because the plastic is plastic and 
Uh, you can scrape your feet pretty easily without any sort of friction. One of the things I'm worried about is spilling something onto the shoe. The 3D printed pattern uh, is plastic. I mean, stuff can get in between here, just like a fabric shoe, but I, I don't know how well it can get out. I didn't attempt to clean the shoe. The shoe can go through water, well, a little bit, uh, because it's sealed on the bottom. You cannot uh, dunk your foot in water, but that's just like a cloth shoe, so I wouldn't worry about that. In the end, I'm gonna say that I really wish these shoes didn't fail because I was having fun wearing them, and I wanted to find ways of making this top part of the shoe more comfortable on my foot. I do wanna try the Feet's custom shoes, and I'm gonna talk to Feet's about getting a pair of those, and having experience with the non-custom shoes, it's a good basis right here to compare against the custom shoes for fit and feel and texture and general awesomeness. I think that Feet's has a good idea going, I think that Feats has the right idea going by offering custom shoes because they're not gonna produce uh, millions of pairs of a certain size. What Feats is doing and what their goal is is to produce precise shoes for a specific customer. And I think that's where the future is going to be with 3D printed shoes or clothing or jewelry or something. It's the unique specific purpose rather than the general mass production appeal. If you yourself want to try a pair of Feet's shoes, I'll put a link down in the description to their website. And they gave me a code to give you. It is 3D Printing Nerd 20. That code is good through July 31st. And it's a one-time use code per person, and it gets you 20% off your Feet's shoe order. So if you order a custom pair of shoes, or if you order a non-custom pair of shoes, you'll get 20% off the bill. I really want these to work. I really like the fit, the, the feel for the most part. There were some things that drove me a little nuts with the, the uncomfortable tonight right here. Uh, the shoes splitting away from the, the bottom of the soles, that's... Um, that's not forgivable, it's repairable, and I'll talk to Feats about getting that repaired, or maybe they can suggest a certain type of glue. Uh, having worked with many 3D prints, I have uh, an enormous amount of glue around that I may try and seal that up just to see if that'll work. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that review of these shoes, and I hope you enjoyed the interview with Lucy. She's a great person, a lot of fun to talk to. The company, I think, it's going in a good direction. I think it's just a matter of time before they get the formula perfect. And I hope I'm there when they do that. Plus, I gave you a, go a code which gets you some money off a pair of shoes if you want to give a pair of feet to try yourself. And these are just cool. Everywhere I went, uh, those two days, when I would show this shoe to someone and I would say, look, it's 3D printed. I would take off my shoe and they would look at it. And they would squeeze it and touch it. and and hold it, and they were very interested in the shoe. It's not the most stylish shoe, but I don't know, I guess uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. There we go, slap a like on this video if you thought it was fun, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, ring that bell if you haven't rang it already, <laughs> to get notified of cool stuff coming up. Hey, you know what? A big thanks to my patrons who support me at patreon.com, and a big thanks to everybody who lets the ads play. That's what helps the channel the most. Finally, don't forget to hug each other more, because I love you guys. As always, high five.